Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, really quick, if you haven't seen my episode on Symmetry Matrix, make sure you check that one out because this very well might be a brand new staple for a lot of decks out there. But don't leave just yet because on this episode, we've got a brand new green card and yeah, I'm okay, the, the title, the thumbnail, everything. Lands! You know what's going on, it's green, right? Lands! Who doesn't love lands? Anyways, blame Eddie for lands. Um, and, uh, I mean, that doesn't really make sense, but yeah, blame Eddie for lands! Anyways, let's jump into it! And, and thank you, Eddie, for all your help. Anyways, also thank you, Eric. Thank you, Alec. Now let's jump into it. <laughs> So Titania's Command is a sorcery for 4 green green that says choose 2. Exile target player's graveyard, you gain 1 life for each card exiled this way. Search your library for up to 2 land cards, put them on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Create 2 2 2 bear creature tokens. Put 2 plus 1 counters on each creature you control. So like the old command cycle and like the new command cycle. Well, actually, I forgot that there were some command cycles in between, um, like, you know, the uh, the Tarkir cycle, as well as uh, the uh, Strixhaven cycle of commands. So, yeah, there's been quite a few commands, but, yeah, basically all of them have that choose two, and you get four options. So, this is a very, very flexible card. And though this is six mana, which is quite a bit, it does give you some good options, and we'll talk about, well... Just how those options can impact certain plays and what kinds of commanders might want to consider this card. But yeah, let's break things down. First up, Graveyard Hate. Having flexible graveyard removal is pretty fantastic. Now, like Eddie mentioned and like I agree with, yeah, I wish this was at instant speed for that. Because usually when you want to deal with a graveyard, it's like, oh, panic button, get rid of their graveyard. They're going to do some crazy things. But still preemptively getting rid of, you know, the Marin's player's graveyard, you know, can definitely help you out. So yeah, blanking a player's graveyard is great, and it can really shut down, obviously, graveyard-centric decks. And on top of that, yeah, you're going to be gaining a good amount of life when you're going up against a graveyard deck. Yeah, because they're going to you know, fill their graveyard quite a bit. If they're self-milling a ton, you can gain a good amount of life with this spell. I mean, 10-plus life pretty easily in some scenarios. Now, with that as well, I mean, this can kind of be a panic button for you, too. You know, later on in the game, let's say you're low on life. You can just exile whoever's got the largest graveyard. If you don't really care about your graveyard and you've got the most in it, sure, get rid of it, gain a ton of life with this card, pad your life total, get back up to a more reasonable amount. Now, the second part, though, is where the real focus of this card is, and if I had to guess, I would say this is definitely going to be the one that is picked the most out of all of the modes. Go get two land cards with them on the battlefield tap. It does not specify basic land cards. So any two lands that you want, you can go get and get them right into play. And yeah, this can be incredibly powerful with the right combination of lands and decks that are looking to tutor for specific lands are going to absolutely love this card for that. And the fact that it's not just one, but it is two. Yeah, there are certain combinations of lands that I will definitely go over and we'll talk about those here in a bit. But yeah, just know that that second option is probably what you're going to be picking a good amount of the time. I mean, when it comes to, you know, going and getting two basics, you know, the, the average cost of that is probably, what, like four mana? Like an explosive vegetation spell, essentially. Getting two basics directly into play tapped. This is obviously two mana more than those. Though, again, you do have additional flexibility picking another option as well. And again, a slight upcharge for being able to go get, you know, any two lands versus just basics. Yeah, that is understandable. The next mode, yeah, creating two, two, two bear creature tokens is probably the kind of weakest uh, among all of these, I would, I would have to say. I mean, again, obviously the graveyard one is more situational, but still, yeah, when you need to get rid of someone's graveyard, that's going to be more powerful than just making two, two, twos. And getting those two lands, obviously, is going to be more powerful in many situations as well. We'll talk about those. But yeah, two, two, two bears, I mean, take it or leave it. That's not bad if you need to actually get some bodies in play. Great. 
And that actually does work well at the next mode, which is put two plus one counters on each creature you control. So if you combine those two, you're actually, you know, getting those bears out, getting creatures on them. Then they're going to be four fours. So yeah, eight power across two bodies for six mana. Not the worst thing ever. And of course, if you've got other creatures in play, you're getting counters on them as well. And yeah, I kind of just skipped to that last one. But yeah, I mean, being able to select that last one, I mean, that can definitely make a big impact. Again, if you've got a go wide strategy or a token strategy, which yeah, goes wide, yeah, you can get a lot of value out of that, making you know, your tiny tokens, maybe they're one ones into three threes, you know, just a massive pump effect and a permanent pump effect for them. If I had to guess again on kind of the order on which these are going to be selected or the most popular ones that are going to be selected, I would have to say again, the second one with the lands, the fourth one with the counters, then probably the graveyard one and the life gain, and then the last one kind of, you know, just you know, rounding it all out is probably those bear tokens with the third option. But yeah, again, I could be wrong. Still a very interesting card and one that yeah has a lot of flexibility to it. And now with that... Let's talk about some somewhat similar cards to this one. And the first one that came to my mind was Hour of Promise. Search your library for the two land cards, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does. <laughs> Anyways, this is a sorcery for four and a green, so one mana less than our new card. But this one also says, then if you control three or more deserts, create two, two, two black zombie creature tokens. So it's kind of like that bear, uh, you know, selection as well. That is only obviously if you have those deserts. I would say that the vast majority of decks that run this do not really care about deserts. They just care about getting two specific lands because, yeah, that's a very powerful thing. But yeah, one extra mana essentially to give you that added flexibility for, you know, the other three options. That's pretty good for the Titanius Command. And of course, another card that this is somewhat reminiscent of is, well, a banned card with Primeval Titan, Prime Time, a 6-6 Giant for the exact same mana cost as, you know, Titanius Command. When enters the battlefield or attacks, make sure to live for the two land cards below the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Basically, you know, that trigger is just exactly what you are doing with that one mode. You get two lands into play. And, um, and, and yeah, I mean, prime time is banned because, well, I mean, this one's a lot easier to use and abuse, obviously. You can blink it for that ETB again. Obviously, you know, you can attack to get that trigger again and again and again. And yeah, extra combats, etc., etc. Just this one can do a lot of searching a lot of the time and can take up quite a bit of time. So... Yes, it is a different card from Titania's Command, but again, somewhat similar. And again, at the very you know beginning of it, follows the exact same kind of functionality. So obviously, yeah, I mean, getting two lands, whatever two lands you want, not just basic lands, is an incredibly powerful thing. And of course, I mean, one of the two land combinations that always comes up when you're talking about you know a card like Our Promise. Uh, yeah, Dark Depths, Thespian Stage. Hey. Now, Titanius Command can go get you these two exact lands, get them directly into play. Dark Depths has, when it enters the battlefield, it's going to enter with 10 ice counters on it. By paying three, you can remove an ice counter from it. And when it has no ice counters on it, you sacrifice it. If you do, you get Merit Lady, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, won't just win you the game right then and there, but that is quite hard to deal with and can hit for a ton. So yeah, eventually can win you the game. Now, if you were to go about this the quote-unquote fair way, I mean, that would cost you, what, 30 mana to do so. But luckily for us, uh, we don't need to pay that much because we're also going to get Thespian Stage, which has tap for colors, pay two tap. Thespian Stage comes a copy of target land, except it has this ability. So essentially what you do is, yeah, you pay the two, you make it a copy in the Dark Depths. The Thespian Stage copy of Dark Depths obviously does not have any ice counters on it because that is an ETB from Dark Depths and it just became a copy of it instead. So it has no ice counters on it. You sacrifice it, you get Merit Lage, have fun with your 2020 Flying Indestructible Merit Lage token. So obviously, yeah, I mean, if your deck is running this, you know, land combo, yeah, you're, you're probably going to want to definitely consider another card that can essentially go get you both pieces of that combo. So yeah, Titanius Command can definitely slot into a deck like that. And again, it has that added flexibility that can help you out in other ways too when you need to. Another two land combo though that I want to bring up is Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth and Cabal Coffers. Oh goodness, here we go. <laughs> Urborg is a legendary land. It says each land is a swamp addition to other types. Whereas Cabal Coffers says pay two tap, add black for each swamp you control. So, I mean, this combination is pretty simple. It's like, hey, Urborg's like, all your lands are swamps, and Cabal Coffers is like, thank you, everything's a swamp, therefore I tap for a ton of mana. Basically, Cabal Coffers, you know, you paid two into it, you're tapping for every single land that you have. So, I mean, this taps for whatever, the total number of lands that you have, minus two 
basically. So that's, that's, uh, yeah, usually a lot of mana, especially again, when you have access to green, which you obviously do if you're considering, you know, Titania's uh, command for, for this kind of a deck. So yeah, and you can ramp in a lot of ways. Next up, I mean, two other lands that you might consider getting that, you know, aren't really a combo together, but, you know, can both just produce a ridiculous amount of mana on their own, and obviously a ridiculous amount of mana together if you're in the right deck. But yeah, Nikto Shrine to Nyx and Gaia's Cradle. Let's talk about them. Nikto Shrine to Nyx can tap for a color, and you can pay two and tap and choose a color. Add to your mana pool an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. And of course, basically your devotion is the number of pips on the board for that color. So yeah, especially if you're in a monocolor deck, and in this case, yeah, I mean, with if you're using, you know, again, Titanius Command, you're playing a mono green deck. If you're using Nyctos as well, yeah, this can end up tapping for a ton of mana. So just going and getting this on its own, I mean, you're getting another land with it too, can just provide you an absurd amount of mana on your next turn if you've got your board set up properly. Speaking of an absurd amount of mana, though, if your board is set up properly, um, Gaia's Cradle, yeah, this thing is expensive for a reason. Tap to add green to your mana pool for each creature you control. Yeah, especially with certain types of decks out there, it is incredibly easy to get a ton of creatures into play in absolutely no time. So being able to just, you know, tutor this out with Titanius Command can more than double your mana on your next turn, essentially. So yeah, have fun with that. And speaking of fun, well, how about Field of the Dead? It enters the battlefield, tap, then it can tap for a colorless. And whenever Field of the Dead or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So, my goodness, yeah. I mean, obviously, you are in green, which can get a ton of lands into play. So, just have fun getting this into play as well with another land as well. And just getting a lot more lands into play, you know, throughout the game by ramping further and further and further, making a zombie army just by having this land in play. And yeah, there are certain commanders that can really make the most out of this. And uh, I will definitely bring up here in a little bit. Yeah, okay. Oh, and I forgot to bring up Vesuva. I just realized this. Yeah, Vesuva, uh, it basically is a clone land. It can have it enter the battlefield as a copy uh, of any land on the battlefield. It comes in tapped. But yeah, uh, um, just, just think about having two people of the deads. Have fun. Or two Cabal Coffers. Gross. Yeah, I mean, non-legendary lands. Consider copying them with Vesuva. So yeah, obviously, Titanius Command can, well, go get you some incredibly impactful lands. And, and again, in my opinion, that is the major mode of that card. And the other modes are nice kind of to splash in. And yeah, different situations are going to, you know, determine what you're going to pick between them. But yeah, the main thing of that is, I think, just focused on the lands. So because of that, well, when it comes to commanders that might want to consider this card, one that definitely comes to mind is Belladros Witherbloom. Yeah, this one can definitely utilize it in a fantastic way. A 4-4 Elder Dragon with flying that says at the beginning of each up, keep creating 1-1. One, one. Green and black, pest creature token. With when this creature dies, you gain one life. By paying 10 life, you untap all lands you control, activate only once each turn. Belladros can basically benefit from any of the modes. I mean, okay, not really the, the bear mode all that much, but I mean, it doesn't really hurt to get extra tokens into play. But yeah, let's just go through those modes real quick. Um, again, the number one mode, in my opinion, getting those lands. Oh, goodness. I mean, go get Gaia's Cradle, right? If, if you have it, right? This commander can make you an absurd amount of creature tokens. Go get that. Uh, this commander can also untap your Gaia's Cradle. So... Yeah, that can be huge. Uh, I mean, obviously, you get another land, too. So it could be Urbor, Cabal Coffers, or whatnot. Also, uh, another one of the modes, again, the exiling a graveyard, gaining life. Uh, sure, uh, this commander, again, you have to pay life in order to untap those lands. So get some life back by exiling a graveyard. And again, just hampering a, an opponent who actually cares about their graveyard. And finally, I mean, again, obviously, this commander can make you an absurd amount of pest creature tokens throughout the game. Again, this is on every single upkeep. So basically, with one trip around the table, that's four tokens. So utilizing that last mode again and getting two counters on all your creatures, that can make your army much, much deadlier. So yeah, Belladros definitely going to want to consider this one. Another commander that I think can definitely consider Titanius Command is Yark the Desecrated, a 3-5 Death Touch Lifelink Elemental Horror that says, if a permanent enter in the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers initial time. Many Yarok decks are built around landfall, and yeah, I mean, you can go get two lands, whatever lands you want for that landfall. One of those lands is probably going to be Field of the Dead, so have fun doubling up on all those zombie triggers. You know, maybe go get Vesuva as well. 
Yeah, I, I think Yara can definitely do a lot of work with that. And again, you still have two other modes to pick. So sure, get counters on your creatures or whatnot. And yeah, you know, Yara has Death Touch and Life Link with, you know, five power. Great. Speaking of a commander that likes very specific lands, how about Nine Fingers Keen? Menace Ward, pay nine life. When it deals combat to a player, look at the top nine cards of your library. You may put a gate card from among them on the battlefield. Then if you control nine or more gates, put the rest on your hand. Otherwise, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So many Nine Fingers Keen decks, probably you know all of them essentially, are built around gates. Go figure. So yeah, a lot of them like to win with Maze's End as well. So being able to just tutor out Two specific gates, you know, most likely, you know, Maze's End being one of them if you need it. Yeah, it can definitely be a great way to go about winning with a Nine Fingers Keen deck. So, yeah, uh, basically, you know, any of those kind of Our Promise cards that can go get two lands are going to be great with this kind of a commander. Again, just having that flexibility for one of the other options can help out in various ways. Moving on, though, another creature that likes very specific lands. Let's talk about Hazazon, Shaper of Sand. A 3-3 Desert Walking Human Warrior that says you may play Desert Lands from your graveyard. Whenever a desert enters the battlefield under your control, create two 1-1 one, one red and green and white Sand Warrior creature tokens. So, two of the modes obviously help this commander out quite a bit. The first of which being, yes, go get two lands because, well, you can go get Desert Lands, which can be obviously fantastic with this commander. So, you're going to be getting your deserts, you're going to be making some tokens, and speaking of those tokens, yeah, I mean, it's going to make a lot of tokens throughout the game, so utilize that last mode again to get counters on them to make them even deadlier. Or how about a commander itself that likes to search for lands like Cura, the Boundless Sky, Flying Death Touch, when it dies, choose one. Search live for the three land cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle. Or create an XX Green Spirit Creature Token where X the number of lands you control. Yeah, the first of those two modes is usually what's going to be chosen. Again, three lands, any lands does not have to be basics. They go into your hand, whereas Titanius Command gets them right into play. So many Cure decks, again, are built around those, you know, two land combinations, potentially, you know, like a Dark Depths and Thespian stage. And while, yes, this commander can do some very great things by getting them in your hand, Getting them right out into play for one extra mana, that's going to be preferable in some scenarios. Well, also, you know, getting the additional, you know, whatever other option you want to choose. Moving on, though, what about a commander that likes one of the other modes more? Or at least, you know, in my opinion, most likely would. Lathiel the Bounteous Dawn. Life link at the beginning of each end step. If you gained life this turn, distribute up to that many plus one counters among any number of other target creatures. So again, as the game goes on and graveyards get built up, or again, if you're playing against a graveyard-centric deck, yeah, you can gain a ton of life from that first mode option. So exile someone's graveyard, gain a ton of life, distribute a lot of counters with this. And again, with counter synergies, yeah, you can also utilize that last mode too to spread out some counters. Or yeah, if you need some bodies on the field, make those bears. And yes, obviously as well, if you'd like to ramp, if you'd like to get specific lands, go get those lands. So yeah, I think Titania's Command can find a place in some Lathiel decks out there. Now I know I've been harping on the bears, and I'm sorry, Ayula, but yeah, you could utilize Titania's Command as well, because bears, right? Ayula Queen among bears, a 2-2 bear that says, when another bear enters the battlefield under control, choose one, put two plus one counters on target bear, or target bear you control fights target creature you don't control. So this kind of flips the script on the card, right? I mean, now the bears is the best option, right, with Ayula. So yeah, you can, you know, choose those bears, you get two of them, they, you know, can each come into play with counters on them, or, you know, you can give them to the other bears too. You can have bears fight, you get those triggers essentially twice, or should I say you get that trigger essentially twice, you can pick your option, but yeah, I mean, let's say you really need some power on the board, you know, get your two, two bears in play, get two counters on them each with these triggers, also get counters on your entire team of bears, you know, with that additional, you know, counter choice, you know, from the card. So yeah, Titanius Command can do quite a bit of work for you, and yeah, again, if you want lands, go get them. If you want to exile graveyard, go get that too, or, you know, go do it, and also gain life. You know what I mean? And finally, we're going from bears to squirrels, so how about Chatterfang? Yeah, Chatterfang loves creature tokens, so... Here we go. If one of our tokens we created under control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. And by paying a black, you can sacrifice X squirrels and target creature gets plus X minus X until end of turn. So with Chatterfang, again, those last two options might be the best ones in, you know, some scenarios. Again, hey, okay, I will make two, two, two bears. Cool. When that happens, I'm also going to be making two 1-1 one, one squirrels. I also am going to say, again, get counters on all my creatures, two counters each. And again, Chatterfang decks can make an absurd amount of squirrel creature tokens, so you're going to have a very wide board state, you're going to be able to make them a lot deadlier, and again, just by casting this command, you can get a lot of power on the board, you can get a lot of power, you know, additionally on, you know, those creatures that you already have on the board, 
And again, if you don't need those, um, pick the other options. Pick what you need. But as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Titania's Command. Yeah, again, six mana is a decent amount of, you know, mana to actually have to put into a spell like this, especially at sorcery speed. And again, could this spell have been adjusted slightly for it to be instant speed? Maybe, probably. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you have a deck that wants to go get specific lands and get them into play, this could be a great card for that deck. Again, this can also be a great way to, you know, have that added flexibility. Graveyard removal, again, is very important, and having that flexibility with a card like this can really help you. Life gain can be great with it, too. Just, you know, pad your life total or, you know, benefit from that life gain in some way. Sure, bears, if you need them, I guess, <laughs> or again, if you've got commanders that can take advantage of you creating creature tokens. And also, yeah, I mean, you can make your army even stronger with that last option, too. So, yeah, there's a good amount of flexibility to this. There's also, again, a good amount of power that you can have. Again, just the, the grossness of being able to go get things like a Gaia's Cradle or, again, the combinations of, you know, Dark Depths, Thespian Sage, or Cabal Coffers, Urborg. Yeah, this card has a good amount of potential for those scenarios. But yeah, there are a lot of exciting quick takes during this spoiler season, so make sure you go check those out as well. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Music